One second. All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. We're doing a quick uh, blues lesson. So this will be stream two of the day. And uh, we went live this morning for our uh, practice group, which we have, I think, 15 people in that. But what I wanted to do was go live for our entire uh, YouTube community and email list just for a Saturday fun thing. We're going to talk a little bit about practicing. This is geared toward my beginners to intermediate players. And if we get up to, let's say, 10 likes pretty quickly, I'll put the link to this chart that we're going to be going over. And many of you have this chart. This is from our um, Blues Academy uh, lesson the other day on 323.23. So what we're going to do today is we talk about different ways to practice. We're actually going to go to a couple of the places in this PDF, and I will be giving you... Uh, practice tips along the way and even revisit what we did this morning. So let me do this. I'm going to go to the uh, end of the PDF and we're going to talk about a couple practice strategies from our uh, recent session. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do um, before I start playing, make sure you like this video. If we get up to 10 likes, I'm going to immediately put the Dropbox link if you don't have the chart. And also, if you get a chance, just say hello in the chat. This is all about fun, about learning how to practice, about practicing together. And if you know anything about iMusic Academy lately, we're doing, uh, I've been creating courses for people for years, but we started about a year and a half ago, courses and community, because I, I really think we get the most done and we stay the most encouraged when we do this stuff together. I learn a lot as the teacher. Uh, I'm also staying accountable, and uh, the accountability factor we have is our practice group. It's really good, so we encourage each other pr to practice and to really enjoy playing this stuff. So let me go ahead. I'm just going to start at measure 17. And occasionally, I'll ch check the chat just to see who's in and who's able to comment or say hello. All right, the first thing I love doing is if I'm playing in the key of C and we're working on our C blues, I love the idea of starting uh, my practice practice session off with the flat seven. There's something about starting off on that flat seventh note that really gets us in the blues spirit and the improv spirit. So I'm on measure 17 right now. And what bass line we're going to use for this morning session is this sort of Ray Charles feel. At iMusic Academy, a lot of you, we started off with the eighth note pattern, which is really important. And then we've done the single, the quarter note pattern for the left hand. And we've also done things like the New Orleans feel, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And we focus a lot on left hand patterns. You practice them hand separate. And the reason is you're building up muscle memory when you do that. So in the case of this lesson right here, we've been using the uh, more of a Ray Charles kind of sound. We do one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. And I've done this so much, I don't even have to think about that, right? We've practiced this together, of uh, making, being very intentional to practice things left hand only. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. And notice what's happening here. You have C, E, G, which is our triad. And then at the end, we go up to the sixth note of the C scale. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Now, a couple things are happening. Notice that my finger numbers, I'm using five, three, two, one, two. And it doesn't matter what key I'm in. If I was on the note G, I would outline the G triad, and then it goes up to the G, the sixth note of the G scale. Same thing if I was in B flat. There's my triad, and there's the sixth note of that scale. But notice that my hand stays in the shape, two, three, four, and... So as we learn these uh, these shapes and this thing, we build up muscle memory, it applies to every single key. So I, I love that factor. All right, now we're going to line up those two measures together. Let me check the chat really quickly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is make sure I have this right hand lick. The first thing I'm thinking about is one and two and three and four. And 
So we have, coming down the scale, we have the flat seven of a C scale, one and two, and and then when I get to that D, I'm actually just rolling that up. So one, two, three are my finger numbers, and my main target note is that E, the third of the C scale. So we have flat seven, which is our nice tension blues kind of sound, one and two and three. And then we have three and four and. In our left hand, we have one, two, three, four, and one, two. So now you're gonna have to learn how to lock the hands up. One and two, so the E's with the G. One and two and three. So when I'm on that G note, I'm making sure I roll up to the third. So D, E flat, and E. And two and three and four and. Four and is by itself, A, G. One and two and three and four. In the second measure, it does a one and two and three and four. It's a little syncopated. A syncopated is kind of like an offbeat kind of feel. Hey, Vicky, how's it going? Good to see you on our second stream of the day. Here we go. One and two and three and four and and two and three and four. And just repeat that. And two and three and four and and if you ever have problems, if you're kind of swinging the bass line, you feel like, I can't lock up the hands. One thing I love to teach is to practice it really straight. So it would be like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And let's say, for instance, you're working on blues example one, our most popular lick at iMusic Academy. You could practice that straight as well instead of playing it like this. One and two and three and four and one and two, which has more of a triplet feel. One and then two and then three and four. And a lot of the time people have trouble, especially at a beginner level, of how do I lock up the hands with having that sort of swing feel. And one way you can do it is by uh, learning how to lock up the hands by playing it straight. So whatever uh, lick you're working on, you can do things like this. One and two and three and four and one and two, even slower. One and those lock up. One and two and three and four and one. And then you start thinking in terms of triplets. One and then two and then three. Okay, let's go back to our lesson where we're actually working on this flat seven idea. One and two and three and four. And now, if I know my major scales, which is something very important that we all need to know, then we can start transposing any lick that we do at iMusic Academy or anywhere else and put it in a different key. And let me give you an example with that. So if I play the F scale, F major has one flat. It's the B flat. So if I use this pattern of a flat seven of starting my blues in the case of C, we go up to the C, the seventh note, we flat it. So now we have this. Da, 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 da. But if I'm in the key of F, I go up to the seventh note of that major scale, I flat it, and now I have the E flat. Da, 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 da. So it's the same pattern, but now I'm because I know my F major scale, I can go up to the seventh note of that scale, flat it, and now I'm coming down and then I end with my root of the F. Same thing if I was in the key of G. G major has one sharp, and that's F sharp. So the seventh note of the G major scale normally has an F sharp. I'm going to flat it, go to the left to get that bluesy sound, and now I have same idea. Da, 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 and F and C. Okay, so now let's go ahead and loop this a couple more times in the key of C, and we're actually doing the bass line. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and again, very slow. One, and two, and three, and four, and it's really important to think about uh, building confidence by l knowing exactly where you line up the hands. So one and one and two. 
two. That G is going to be on E. One and two and and then when I roll up to this E note, the target note is the E, and I land right there. So right there together, I'm at G and E. So I make sure I get to my target note, which is the E, and then I do it again slowly. There it is, and then that's by itself. Four and one and three and four and and then one and two and three and four and one and two and three all right now let's go ahead i'll let you guys work on that one and thank you for the six likes that have come in when we get up to 10 likes i'm going to drop the uh link in the chat so you guys can just immediately download this this whole two-page uh chart so here we go. Let's do the next, the very next thing. I love what's happening here, this six lick. And basically we have a lot of things that are happening in this one simple lick. We have our roll up uh, of the D, E flat, E, but this time we're gonna use more of a Ray Charles bluesy type fingering to get this. And the reason we're doing this is because there's something really uh, amazing that happens when we use one finger to do multiple slide notes. When we, when we started doing at iMusic Academy, I did this whole Ray Charles workout and we did the, the song What I'd Say. And so we use different fingers for, um, for the slide licks that we use. And one of those would be one, two, two. And another one we use is whenever you come down, you do three, three instead of four, three. There's something about the sound you get when you go three, three, and then you finish your blue scale riffs. So this lick right here, we're gonna go three and four and one and two. Let me think of exactly how I did this. Oh, right on the beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. So a couple things are happening. Obviously we have this slide, one, that's our downbeat, one and two and. This comes out of the C6 lick, right? You have C, E, and G, which is the triad, and the sixth note in the same way that you have the bass line does a C and then the six. So we have one and two and three and four and. Notice that I get here and I, I'm on the A, four and. Our spacing is the octave. This is a very important spacing to get for our fingers. We need to learn about octaves. Octaves are the same note, and it's a it's a stretch that uh, a spacing that you need to know. In the same way we we learned our triads and other spacing when we play blues shape one, we need to know the octave. It's such a powerful and important sound, and you can even practice it very with very simple movements like C up to E flat, the first two notes of the blues scale. So I could practice it like this. I'm getting that octave down, one and two and three and four and one. Now listen to the lick very slowly. left hand only for a minute two, three and four and one and two and three and four and now what I'm doing let me straighten it out one and two and three and four and one One more time. One and two. B two gets the E natural. One and two and three. Oh, and the octave gets the G. And then two and three. And watch this. Four and. So the A gets the octave. Four and. And then um, one and two and three. So notice that my C worked with the octave. So I can even practice that. One and two, three and four and. Now here's the whole lick. Three and four. Okay, 
right. now I could put that with the first exercise that I practiced. You know, we just did where we said, okay, the first thing is I want to get that bluesy sound of the flat seven. So how about we work on those two together? went to the F bass line, which is the four chord of a C blues. It's the same sh shape in my left hand, but also this C octave, the first five notes of the blues scale is going to sound great over no matter what chord I use, which brings up a really important thing also is that uh, blues shapes, you know, we have a blues shapes course that we came out with and blues shapes in all keys and everything. But the most important thing about that is blues shape one is a perfect example for beginners and intermediate uh, players and even advanced players to know that we can get into shapes throughout the keyboard that help us play notes that are going to work in all keys. For instance, shape one, you put your fingers over each note. C, E flat, F, F sharp, G. Mash them all together and it sounds awful, but you know that you get your hand in this shape and I don't even have to look at the keyboard. I can put my hand up here and I know that the C is going to work, the E flat is going to work, the F, the F sharp, and the G. And I can even practice against this bass line. And let's go automatic pilot first. Listen to this, one and two. So notice my F locked up perfect. Oh, and the G's lined up together. Now when I get to here, um, F against the A, and the G flat, the G is against the E flat. I can start at the top. Once you get this shape down, you can mix and match however you want. You could turn it around like this. Once you get this shape down, there are other things that we've learned recently uh, in our blue shapes course and other things is that this is shape one and you go to the top half of the blue scale and now you have G, B flat, C, and E flat. And this is another shape. All of those notes are going to work. And if that's the case, then you have this bass line right here and you know that all these notes, all these notes are going to work. Even when I go to F. That's the G chord. Okay, now, notice that I had shape one and shape two. Let's take it one more step. Let's say that we're gonna go down three half steps and do the first four notes of the A blues scale, which is the C shape one transposed down to A. And now you have those four notes right there. So listen to that sound. over the F chord. 
And then what, what you do next is you say, okay, the A blues scale works, the first four notes, the C blues scale works, and then this shape two works for the top half of the blues scale. And then you say, well, I like the sound of the minor third, but I also like the sound of the minor to major third that we did right here. Right, it gives us that sort of uh, sad minor blues sound, which sounds great and very bluesy, but we want to hear that major sound occasionally. Right? Minor. And now major. Major. Minor. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to measure 17, which is really important, and now I'm going to do... Just kind of working that, and now I'll do the C6 lick. just the first five notes of the blues scale and kind of experimenting and I did go down the flat seven but very slowly If you have trouble putting the hands together, the reason is because we, we have to take a little time to build up some muscle memory. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. And then you can start simple. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, let's keep going down the PDF. And remember, as we get to 10 likes, which is very easy to get to, especially since we're at eight, I'm going to put the link in the chat so you guys can immediately download this chart, these two pages, and you'll have them and always have them. And it's very simple. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's very quick. So let's get to 10 likes. Also, somebody else other than Vicky, which Vicky, I'm always glad that you say hello in the chat, but uh, somebody else say hello in the chat if you get a chance and uh, tell me where you're from. That's very helpful. All right, if you go down, we're going to look at the ending, measure 21 of this chart. And notice that it does this Ray Charles thing, which we've been practicing. And I really want you guys to practice this uh, right hand only, this lick. So this comes right out of what I'd say, which we've been practicing left hand only and putting the hands together. And there are lots of different ways we use to lock the hands up. We also have a full workout that we've done, our practice group in the key of E. And I have tips that show you exactly, all right, from the ground up, here's how you learn this bass line, here's how you learn the right hand lick, and then here's how you put it all together. But right now I want you to know that we're working on this idea of using fingers like two and three to help line uh, to help play these licks to make them really sound good. So at the end of what what I'd say there in the key of E, it's in the key of E, but I want to we're working on this in the key of C as well. And we're going going to do one, two, two, four, five, and then you go three, 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 two, one, two, three. So we have And what we're doing now is an actual ending from the Ray Charles thing. Okay, now notice that we're very straight, right on it. One and two and. So let's work on that. So the first thing is our target note is G. One. One and two and. F sharp to F. At first, that's going to feel really strange if we haven't been doing that. You have to use your third finger and slide it down 
to here, which as I have a classical background as well, and when I was first learning that idea, I thought, what in the world? That's for people who don't know the correct fingering and everything, but, the, but I was wrong. It's, it's for people who want to sound good. It, when you use things like this, it's such a natural thing to go, instead of this, four, three, See, I'm not even clean that, but if you learn how to do this, and it takes work. I'm still working on this all the time myself, is to practice playing fingerings that I normally wouldn't play, but you learn how to do it. So I could either play this one, two, two, four, three, or I can do two, three, three. So I could go. At the end here of this ending, we're just doing one, two, three, right? Going up to the third of G, which is a whole nother conversation of chord tones on downbeats. We've been exploring that a lot at iMusic Academy, and that is if you want to sound good in your improvisations, use chord tones on downbeats. That means if it's on one, two, three, and four, uh, four most of the time in all styles of music for for all of us to sound good is we want to have a lot of chord tones on downbeats that's not a, uh, a an exact rule it has to be but for the majority of the time your favorite uh, pianists musicians all over the world are usually using a lot of chord tones on downbeats and there are lots of ways to learn how to do that so right here I'm just practicing this right hand only one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and the bass line we're going to use we've been doing this a lot at iMusic Academy as well as we work a lot on a lot of different bass lines but this one one two three four one and two and three and and sometimes all it takes is somebody showing us how to do a better finger than we might think of in terms of bass lines and things watch this five three one, two, one. That fingering sets us up for a perfect flow. F five, three, one, two, one. And it honestly helps us uh, really concentrate on the right hand. One and two. Notice that the C is with the E. And two and three and four. My F sharp is with the C. at the top. Now let's talk about different ways to, uh, if you have an ending, let's say we're working on the very last measure or the last two measures of this PDF, it's an ending and, I, and it says ending. So as you're practicing and you're, you're, you, let's say you had 20 minutes uh, in a day to practice, well make a goal to really practice this ending so that even if you're doing blues example one with eighth notes, Practicing that. And now to go to F. Two and three and back to C. And now I'm going to go to G. How about F? Now watch this. Right? So I'm practicing playing the blues in whatever style or whatever lick I'm working on. But then I'm going to focus on making sure every time to get back to the top for now, I'm going to use this lick. And what you have to do is practice it Le right hand only and then left hand only and then practice putting it together. But make sure your fingering is consistent. One, two, two four, five, and then you go three, three, and you get used to this slide, and then two, one, and I do one, two, three. And then maybe I'm going to put all of the three tips that we've done already today together. Maybe I'm going to play my eighth note bass line, but uh, I'm also going to do the first five notes of the blues scale, or I'm going to do this lick that we did, measure 18 of the C6 lick and maybe the octave sum, and then the A, uh, first four notes of the A blues scale. And then at the end, I'm going to do the turnaround. So maybe I'm going to do this.
about the first example from, from uh, the blues courses. I do there that was just uh, spontaneous on the fly I didn't do this I did this now with our uh, practice group lately I've been talking about different endings you can use and this one just kind of came out but you take any key you're in the key of C and I put a C on the bottom and C on the top and I go come down a whole step to B flat and then I go up to the third of the scale so we have this and once you get there, you're home free because you do chromatically each note up, uh, as you, and then on the way back down, on the way down, it's also chromatic. So you have this one, and, and this is a great ending. One and two and three and four and one. I could be in any key, F and F, and I go all right, chroma uh, whole note, whole step down. Sorry, and then third up of the scale. And then chromatically, or in the key of G. So little things like this, we, we learn little patterns and little ways to transpose things, and it makes all the difference. And right now, we're focusing on this, the Ray Charles. third for that sound listen to this slowly two more things uh, we have eight we have eight pe eight people have liked this video we get to 10 before we go off and I'm gonna go for another 10 minutes or so we get to 10 I'll put the link to grab this chart in the chat so you want to get that before the chat goes away which I think it goes away right when we get done with the live and it should be available tomorrow but anyway we'll, we will see I think we're at nine now okay very good all right, we'll get to 10 in the next 10 minutes, which should be good. All right, let's go ahead and go to the first page. And then one, I know we're going to get to 10 because I know how iMusic Academy is. You guys are awesome, and you always jump on this live. We usually get up to 20 uh, likes pretty easily. So when I uh, put this link up and you get it, please do me a favor and let me know that you download the PDF and you're good to go and um, and any comments would be greatly appreciated. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. If you look at the first part of this lesson, you have all I separated these into two measure phrases. Why did I do that? Because uh, I want you guys to have some focused practice time. You take sometimes you take one lick and if you have more experience, put it in a different key. If I play this lick, which is measure three. Da, 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 da. That's sixth note, fifth note, and then coming down with a minor third. Well, if I was in the key of F, I go to the sixth note of the scale and then the minor third. So it doesn't matter what key I'm in. If I know my major scales and I know the formula, we can play in any key. This example right here is, uh, that's the third example in the PDF. But let me choose the second measure, which is the Ray Charles idea. 
but there's something really important that happens here. If I know the formula and I say, okay, that's the fifth note of the C scale, and that's where that Ray Charles lick starts, and make sure you use the right fingering. But I noticed something that is that that's such a great pattern and a great slide. Well, I, I started thinking, well, what other um, what other notes can we use to do that same exact pattern? An easy one is that minor third to major third. Isn't that interesting how that works? So there's the minor third, and I'm actually going to the D and sliding up, but I like the idea of the same kind of Ray Charles feel up to the sixth note of the scale, and then you use your flat third, second root. And I'm using that same fingering to get the sound I want. So we have. That time, but it still worked. That's what I was going for. Again. And notice that I'm not in any, any kind of hurry to play anything fast. I love the sound of it slow. It feels really good. But even these first few examples, it's a whole... Uh, it's a whole vocabulary of ideas, right? The second measure has this the fifth of whatever key you're in. If I was in the key of E, there it is, getting to that fifth. So in the key of C, I'm getting to the fifth, my main target note, up to the flat seven, which once again reinforces this idea of your flat seven being a really bluesy thing. This connects with the lick that we did when we started the video today. But notice I'm getting there, and then I go, dun, 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 which is still part of the first four notes, I'm sorry, five notes of the C blues scale. You're still getting those blues scale notes in. And what makes blues scale and uh, what makes music, especially blues, sound really good, we know mostly the notes are going to come from the blues scale, but it's about the way people like Ray Charles and other brilliant musicians would use those scales by using interesting fingerings and having great feel by just knowing how to turn around the blues scale and make it sound uh, unique and uh, and you and you know it's Ray Charles because of his feel right away you know it okay so here we go so th so this is a great thing to practice well look at the next one we did uh, the third example is the C6 lick da, 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 da. so when I start off this lick with the same Ray Charles feel I'm doing this is from blues volume one right but this Ray Charles is just an idea that helps us set up for that kind of lick. Well, what's happening? Why, do, why in the world does that even sound good? Because you're going minor third to major third, which gives you that sort of sad minor scale tension with a happy release there. And then you go up to the sixth note, which again is a beautiful way of adding the sixth note to your blues playing. Da, 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 da. But I can also go down here and play that eighth a note and use the first note of the A blues scale. Okay, so let's keep going. And uh, a couple more things I want to show you. All right, we are at nine likes. So one more like comes in, and I'm putting the um, the link in for a quick direct download. And you guys are going to download it and say, "Hey, I've got the PDF." And you can even say uh, that you like it or um, that you're enjoying this kind of content. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the next, the next little idea in the PDF. So notice it's a triplet idea: E flat, E, and G. Right? Notice that right away, C, E, G. It's the triad. There are so many uh, licks and ways to turn around your triad or use the triad in your improv. And in this case, you have exactly what we've been talking about: minor third to major third to fifth. And you can visualize the C triad. Do -do -da, do -do -da, do -do -da, one and then two and then sometimes people say one triplet, two triplet. I like one and then two and then three and then four and then. I want to give you a really important tip as we're learning about 
uh, things like triplets in our blues playing, you'll often see a triplet rhythm, so a three note, one and then two, and a, a rhythm that on paper you see one and then in our left hand it looks like eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, but the rhythm usually calls for, even though it's written eighth notes, you play your sort of swing feel for your blues if you think one and then two and then, instead of one and two and three and it would sound more like this one and then two and then. and what happens is your left hand becomes a longer I'm sorry your first note becomes longer one and then two and then and people say, sometimes say oh I, I like the way uh, the way the blues feels and I like the way your left hand is seems like it's flowing pretty good the only reason that if, if it s sounds like it's flowing at times and it sounds good is because I'm thinking more in terms of one and then two and then three and so it creates a longer long short long short long short and I love to teach students to make sure you repeat the C I don't want you drag in sometimes people try to drag they don't lift up your C but I like one and then two and so it's really secure and you're always repeating that that um, that C when it calls for it Okay, so if we have this one and then sort of a long short and thinking triplets, it helps us, helps us easily lock up the right hand. One and then. Notice that it locked up perfectly. One and then, two and then. Okay, now this satisfies the E note and the E flat to E satisfies the need to occasionally hit that major sound. So even the A blues scale, the first four notes, listen to this, even when I go to F, then I could go da da da. go to G. Let me do that again. So it doesn't matter. I'm mixing and matching everything. Do you guys notice how, how we're doing that? If you have this example right here, that'll technically work over the whole blues. Even this will work over the whole blues. So will this. And even this, even the Ray Charles idea, will pretty much work over the whole blues. Let me do that again. All right, guys, let me, uh, let's wind up by just talking through some different ways to encourage you guys to practice before we hang up. Uh, with my students, what, one thing that I like to, to do is to make sure they're working their fingers every day. Uh, you guys know that there's a, a very extensive course at iMusic Academy called 50 Days to Flying Fingers. And I have an example or two somewhere on the YouTube channel. But the main thing is your... Um, with my classical background and my love for jazz, I was able to create a crazy course called 50 Days to Flying Fingers. And I always encourage my students to start your day with one of those exercises. And I want to, uh-oh, it just came in. All right, 10 likes. As promised, I'm going to put this link in right now, and then we'll finish talking in just a minute. But um, here we go. Let me put that in. Okay, so I just put the PDF link, and you guys download it if you don't have it, and then tell me that you got it, and then we're good to go. And it's one way that you can put in the comments really quick or the chat that you uh, are glad that you got that and that you're glad to be here because I am certainly glad to have you guys here. All right, so uh, 50 Days to Flying Fingers, example one even, has this idea of... Um, let me show you real quick. So you take a C triad 
and in the left hand you have five, three, one. In the right hand you have one, three, five, our finger numbers. And you go up one and two and three and four and, and then you're going to go to D and hold those notes on the bottom, F, G. And then you do it again, holding the bottom notes. You're not looking for speed at this point, and you do it four times. And then D, F, and G. Now you're going to reverse it. You're going to start at the top, G, E, C. Now F, D, and C. Coming down, and you're going to do this four times. I'll speed it up just a little bit. You would do that a couple of different times, and then within four or five minutes, you're going to have it, and you're going to be ready to go. And if you did that every day, even that one single exercise, you're going to notice a, a crazy difference in your technique and all your fingers working. And the reason is because our fourth and fifth fingers are naturally weak. This exercise, as well as many others, will help uh, give you strength in in all of your fingers. The other thing I like to encourage people to do is every day do your five note pattern of the blues. Start with C. You're not looking for speed, you're just working on developing this shape one and you're also learning or making sure you're using all of your fingers. If you have more experience just practice going up a, a, a half step or a whole step and eventually going in all keys and make it a daily, uh, a daily routine of waking up Forcing yourself to go to the keyboard and practicing something like that, that'll really help you. So what I did this morning for our practice group is I said, all right, we're going to go to day 32 in 50 Days to Flying Fingers, which is a, an insane uh, course, but I love to get them to working on uh, on the mind. For instance, day 32 has this. Instead of this, it's minor. So C, E flat, G, you still hold the bottom notes. Then the D, F, and G is the same. And you do that four times. But if anybody that's watching this now actually does that exercise, I want you to tell me. You can email me, bob at imusicacademy.com, and tell me how that one exercise makes you feel, if you do it the way you're supposed to, by holding the bottom note and then doing the arpeggio. And then you hold D and do F and G by holding the bottom notes. And you'll immediately know, okay, and now I see and now I feel how weak my fingers are. And that goes for everybody, including me. I had to learn how to do those things and just thankful that, um, that I have, have done that and have worked on those exercises. All right, now, did anybody get the PDF? While I'm waiting on, we're, now we're chatting for a minute. So... Uh, Exciting news coming to iMusic Academy for anybody who doesn't know is that for the last year and a half, I have had six people that have been students of mine. Uh, now, I do the thing where if somebody wants to uh, do a hour lesson and uh, I have some online students, but what I did and, you know, they, they pay me per lesson the same amount that I would pay if I was having a lesson with somebody. But I did this thing where um, I wanted to develop a, a whole iMusic Academy where we have courses and accountability is uh, not accountability courses and community. So faithfully for the last um, year and a half, uh, we've developed a whole back into iMusic Academy. It's a huge, crazy, massive platform. And, uh, for the last year and a half, we've been doing all this. We have four lives a week. All right, awesome, Tammy. Perfect. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. So, Tammy, this morning, I'll give you an example. I got something for you here in just a minute. So let me just finish telling you that now I'm sort of pouring my heart out to where how awesome this last year has been, year and a half. Uh, I've developed a whole system back in. So, yes, I've created courses. You guys know this. Many of you have bought my courses. Not only have we revamped all of our old courses uh, and our new courses, but we've moved to an online platform, and I'm calling it courses. And basically, it's like courses and community. But as of uh, April 1st, we are going live with our back end of the uh the iMusic Academy. So that's really fun. But I faithfully have had six people that um, 
that have been, you know, every week, four lessons, we do technique, we do improv, we do jazz, blues, even classical sight reading, you name it, ear training, et cetera. I go on and on. But, um, but also in addition to all that, I've been able to make some incredible friends throughout this whole thing. So I look forward to hanging out with them. Uh, you know, we don't miss, uh, we don't miss our lessons every week uh, we've been meeting together. And if they miss, they can watch it at any time during the day. And at the same time, um, they never have to feel like they have to get caught up because all of this stuff that we do, we repeat things. These blues ideas, these Ray Charles ideas, everything we're doing, these are things that you get better and better at by repetition. And you keep it fun. You got to keep this music stuff fun. Oh. Hey, uh, Tammy, that's really awesome. And j just so you know, so I'm a guitarist as well. And uh, Jeffrey knows also I love to play other instruments. And Jeffrey's uh, a multi-instrumentalist as well. Uh, I play saxophone and other instruments. And so I get it. I get it. And I also love, I'm going to show you something in just a minute, Tammy, that you're going to absolutely love. And so will everybody else. Again, make sure you like this video. Let's keep it going. Uh, all right, so let me let me talk for a few more minutes and then I'll get off. But I'm going to show Tammy something very cool. And I want to tell you, everybody here, something really cool about iMusic Academy that's about to happen. Um, so back to this membership idea th th that I had, I developed, it was very loose. And it, again, it's under the radar and meaning I just wanted to make sure that whatever I was providing would, was helping people. Like I love the idea of creating courses and I, we have so much material that we've created, but even throughout this year and a half with these faithful six that I had, we created two full volumes of Bob songs, blues and jazz songs. And uh, I even made them for sale for a while uh, and it had a boot camp and things like that. But um, all this material we've created is only because I had the community aspect of working with people like on a, almost a daily basis. And so that's been cool. So what I always like to do is uh, I will get, I will give you guys more information maybe tomorrow on what the academy is going to look like moving forward. But if anybody is interested in learning about the academy before we go live, I will tell you that it will benefit you greatly if you uh, uh, and, and you'll know why if you email me. But um, there's something very special I've done for the people who have been with me for a year and a half. And also, we had six or seven people over the last week and a half that are uh, temporarily, uh, they're checking out, the, the w they're part of our membership group. And uh, so now we're up to like 15 or 16, and they've been tagging along uh, with us. And it's been really, really special. I've decided that moving forward, when we, when we start in April, I'm going to do six students at a time because I had six students for a year and a half. And then, uh, and then we added six more people this last week. And, uh, and at least uh, uh, like six people per month or however many I decide uh, that I'll be able to add because I don't want to just have people join. I want to like get to know, you know, what's your story, who you are, what do you love about music, that kind of thing. So I'm more interested in really working with people. And, and uh, anyway, all right, so let me give Tammy something cool. But before I do that, I got to tell you, we have my most awful video that's about to go to a million views. Most of you probably saw me for the first time by seeing the how to, uh, one hour to being a blues pro or something something like that. It's the worst quality video I could imagine, but people so uh, seem to like it. And so it's about to be at a million views. So I've asked our YouTube community and my email list community, what should we do to uh, celebrate a million views? I've suggested a couple of things. Uh, we either sponsor a uh, child for... Uh, I've done a music camp before where we help pay their tuition. I had one person at iMusic Academy pay for a, a, a student's whole jazz camp experience. Their accommodations, their tuition, their books, etc. It was crazy. A couple thousand dollars, which was unbelievable. 
but but even uh, do we scholarship uh, students some lessons? And I'm talking about their local lessons, not necessarily at iMusic Academy or anything like that. Or instruments uh, through iMusic Academy, people have helped me do uh, ray, uh, buy violins for students, uh, guitars, trombones. Uh, trumpets, things like that. In fact, there's a young man <laughs> that's staying at our house right now who's on his spring break who was my actually first... Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm a worship pastor at a church, but we had this music school in, in a really in, uh, awesome community. And my first student, uh, his name is Rodney. He's with us this weekend. But Rodney, we bought him a trumpet. And uh, it's the coolest video. So if you want to see that video, you guys let me know. Uh, but email me, bob at imusicacademy.com. Anyway, let me get back to this million thing. Is it we give away a course? We say, all right, we're at a million. Does anybody want a course? Or, or do we do something different? I'm open to su suggestions. It's a big day, day for me to get to a million views. <laughs> Awesome, Tammy. I am too. All right, Tammy, I have something for you. Uh, so I'm about to jump in, in into that in one second. Let me say this, guys. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of this back end, this thing that's about to launch at iMusic Academy, you need to email me because uh, what I've done for the people uh, who have been a part of my group it's very special and it's very, um, what I'm doing for them is uh, never going to change f for them. In other words, I'm giving them the same opportunity and that opportunity will, will, um, will always be there. So if you're even remotely interested in any of that, please email me at bob at imusicacademy.com and just for the sake of uh, making sure it goes through, copy me at bobtaylormusic at gmail.com. All right, now here we go. I'm going to show you something for Tammy and anybody else. And I'm glad you said that, Tammy, because you're going to love this. And even a be, being a beginner, um, as part of iMusic Academy, uh, there, there are all different kinds of levels that people will be able to be. There are some people that are just interested in blues, and there's that opportunity. There's some people interested in jazz. There's some people that are classical players. They've learned how to read music and they're making the transition. There are people who are interested in technique, ear training, and sight reading music, and as well as pop. So you have jazz, pop, pop and gospel. But here's what I love to show my beginners and honestly intermediate players. Watch this. So you're in the key of C major. And you guys put in the chat if you're resonating with what I'm about to show you as I show you this. So you have C, D, and G. And that's just one, two, and five of the C major scale. If I play C in the bass note, and you can even play a C octave, right? As I go down the C scale and don't change the right hand, there's a little tension there, but that still sounds all right to me. Listen to this. Listen to this, uh, still keeping the right hand. That sounds great to me. F, that's a nice F chord. E chord, D. Now, I did a whole lesson on this morning, but I'm giving you guys the shortcut version. You can also put a G in the bottom. So now you have G, C, D, and G, and watch this. If I did quarter notes, and now I'll just play the B to hear that again. Just keeping that going with quarter notes. And now G. You talk about songwriting, like every song you could possibly think of. I'm going to turn on a little smoky jazz room. Testing one, two, one, two. Do, do. So if I was, just to show you, so. A joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive. how that works it's like it doesn't matter i could play the wheels on the bus the wheels on the bus go round and round i could go to g ground and round round and round the wheels on the bus right angels we have heard on high all those notes 
notes are going to work over this whole thing. And then you could take it to the next level. Watch this. I can go, if I was just on a C chord, I'm only changing the melody note at the top. So like you know, uh, like the F is gonna sound fantastic. Whatever, or F. And C over E always sounds good, and then to A. Tammy's writing a song with the one and only chord. And then D minor is always gonna sound fantastic. D minor eleven. That's the other thing. So then if you had this one idea and you could play and sing a million different songs and then you start thinking like a guitarist. I'm not changing the chord, I'm just adding melody notes. It's just like super easy. Let me turn off Smoky Jazz Room for a minute. It's just very simple ways to learn how to, uh, even as a songwriter. And then once you take this five, one, two, three, doesn't matter what key we're in. Now, now we're in B flat. Tammy's writing a song today. Da -da -da -da. She got bills to pay, but I know. Anyway. <laughs> Isn't that easy? People like when they realize you can take something so easy and then you start doing this, what? All I'm doing is changing it up like one little note. gives you inspiration for writing simple songs awesome very cool all right you, you know i've got people that uh, that have that uh have all different kinds of names so let me say am i even saying it right or is it to me to me <laughs> I say Tame, she's writing. Tan May, Tan May, all right, Tan May. Tan May, he's writing a song today. Tan May, he's got bills to pay. Everybody sing Tan May, he's writing a song today. 
was writing a song today. Ten May, he's got bills to pay. Guess, guess where I went in 2019? Mumbai. I have lots of friends from India. Very cool. Yes, I went to Mumbai. It was awesome. In fact, uh, hold on, Tanmay. I want to show you an instrument and you tell me if you recognize it. I wouldn't say it's that's an unusual name. I think it's an awesome name. Well, actually, I was going to show you my drum, which is up on uh, one of my shelves that I'm not going to bring down now, but it's from India. And then, can you see this? Let's see. Make sure. So this instrument right here, really cool story. I met some really awesome people and played a lot of music with some people in India. And uh, I was in... Um, uh, a, a rough area, I say a rough area, um, an area that uh, was kind of off the beaten path, and I met some amazing people, and the very last day that I was there, this guy, these guys who had zero anything, okay, when I say they had nothing, they had their families, which is everything, but like monetary, like money and all that, they didn't have any of that, the very last day I was there, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, I'll have to show you the drum. But anyway, so the very last day I'm there, this guy comes up, and he had traveled a ways, and he shows up, and he gave me this flute. And it is fantastic. And, like, it, ma it made my whole trip of just that he would, he actually did that uh, for me. And uh, anyway, I came back to my church, and I played that in church told him the story about that so that was a really cool experience priceless right here <laughs> yeah i enjoyed i enjoyed my time in india very cool i was just thinking about the other day about how crazy it was going to the mum the airport in mumbai how crazy all right guys I've kept y'all long enough. I'm going to let you, you guys go practice in a minute. Tammy, I I'm going to go back and read through some of your... Um, I need to give my shout-outs. I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so... As always, I want to thank Vicky for hanging out on the stream today, for Tammy for hanging out on, on the... Uh, on the stream today and if I have it right and then for Jeffrey Jeffrey is always here I can always count on Jeffrey and Vicki and several others to show up all right so to my six faithful in the community Dave P Dave W Claire T man Peter Ian you guys are amazing you guys know that I tell you that every day David D charity Vicki Vicki of course I meant to include you it's actually the faithful seven Vicki Vicki's been around forever Charity, Pat, Bill, Ted, Martin, Raymond, Karen, and Helga. I've enjoyed very much hanging out with you guys. And it's about to get real here at iMusic Academy because chords plus community is where the future of where we're going. And it's been going great. So thank you for all of that. Um, for those of you who need to know that we've invested in a whole huge platform where everything's online, there are success paths. So it's not just, 
anyone gets courses anymore. And then there's, it's just like, you're on your own. You're not on your own. Uh, and also, uh, those people that sign up to be, if they want to do the blues path, uh, then you have a lesson with me every week. Uh, we have a whole thing already in place, which is going to be amazing. And then you also are able to say, all right, I went through blues volume one, uh, example seven, and you mark as completed and it's all within the platform, which is really awesome. And then there are lots of other things we're doing. There's a uh, Accord Academy thing that we started, which I love. It's um, things like I did this morning. I was showing our uh, people that, yes, we have, like let's say you have a D chord and you learn how to build these fourth voicings, E up to A is D and then A up to D is G. And I listen to this. I can go here and then I can just change the bottom two notes uh, in, the, in the right hand and I can go and change one note. Now listen how beautiful that sounds. And I can go to G and play some things. Or I can go here and I can go down. Listen how beautiful that simple chord is. Or if I'm in, play a G major chord and I play a C 10th chord and roll it, you can roll it up or play it together. Now you have a beautiful C major nine chord, right? Or I can play a B flat triad and put the simple voicing like this, two note voicing. And now you have this. Doesn't that sound beautiful like that? And then I could go A flat. So there are fun little ways, chord shortcuts and things like that, that we've uh, created as well as, um, anyway, there's so much to tell. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And I, uh, I am, um, I would love to talk with you, Tan May, and for anybody, if it's not with me, find somebody that, or a place where you can be in community. I'm telling you, it's made all the difference. I have, I've been doing four lives a week with this, this community, and it really makes all the difference. I love, I love it. In fact, I'm the one who is on too long. <laughs> I'll tell them, all right, I'm going to do uh, 10 minutes today and it's 20 or 30 and it's 50. So, uh, we're having a great time there and I really appreciate the relationships. All right, everybody, including you, Tan May and Jeffrey and Vicki, think of what we're going to do for the 1 million, uh, once, once we get to a million views, I need some, uh, I need some answers pretty soon because we're at a, less than 11,000 views left and it's going pretty quickly. So I want to do something special for the iMusic Academy community. We can either do a course giveaway or we can do something for somebody else, which I'll tell you, I know what my answer is, but I want to, I want us all in on it together. Um, and I have some ideas. If you have any questions on anything, email me, bob at imusicacademy.com. And just to be safe, to make sure we don't have any spam issues, email me, bobtaylormusic uh, at gmail.com. I'm going to go ahead and just type in my email addresses just so you have them. And enjoy that PDF that, uh, that I put out there. And I hope you enjoy it. And thank you again so much for hanging out. And make sure it's the email is actually bob at imusicacademy.com. Awesome. Tanmay, you are, are the kind of person that is 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 what is happening every day at iMusic Academy as I'm meeting somebody that is connecting with other people. And that is what I get fired up with. So thank you. Tanmay, I expect an email from you. Jeffrey, always so good to see you. Vicky, y'all have an awesome day. Somebody practice that thing and make sure you practice example one of the 50 days of flying fingers. I showed you guys how to do it and work those fingers. And I'll see you guys probably in, I'll probably do a Sunday afternoon stream just for fun. And I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm going to leave the uh, stream up with the graphic up just another minute or two so you guys can say your goodbyes.
go tell